Hi there, Not Media UK. We're still here back at the Robin, and I'm joined by Mr. Ryan Roxy at Lost Angels. Hello. How are you doing? Good. What Good. a brilliant Good. show. I'm just saying that to everybody. What a brilliant show, man. Yeah? Well, tonight I'm a Lost Angel. I, tomorrow, I don't know I, 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 what I will be, but tonight I am a Lost Angel. How long have you been in the Lost Angel? Well, we've been in the band in existence for like over six, seven, eight years. I did my first tour with Lost Angels in 2013. So that was six years ago we hit the UK. And it's been a good idea for many, many years. That idea doesn't always transform itself into gigs, but it finally did on this UK tour. And it's been quite fun. Yeah. And uh, your history, when did you start playing? Um, I tell people I've played in about 100 bands, 98 you never heard of. But the Try me. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, tonight we played a lot of those bands um, that we all come from, our histories and stuff. But I would say the biggest band that I've been able to play with and be a part of and be a part of his legacy is Alice Cooper. Brilliant. I play guitar for Alice Cooper. Um, I also uh, wrote and recorded an album with Slash called Slash's Snake Pit. And that yeah. album was I probably saw you with Slash's Snake Pit. Perhaps you did? Yeah, yeah. I think it is. That was a, a, a hundred haircuts ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Alice always manages to get great guitarists, doesn't he? I know you do, does it too. Well, I'm, I'll take the compliment. Yeah. Thank you very much. I know this. I know that every single year that we get a new set list, it's challenging and pretty humbling to play um, a bunch of different eras of Alice Cooper guitar duos, whether it's the original band with... Um, Glenn Buxton and Michael Bruce, or whether it's uh, Hunter Wagner. There's a lot of um, great guitar duos that have been throughout the years. <laughs> How was the show the other night then with Alice? It was quite fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've just um, wrapped up a UK tour with Alice. Yeah. And I had two days off. My wife flew in to London. We were able to hang out for a couple of days and then dove right into the That's Los funny. Angeles. So we went from playing arenas um, and bigger venues all throughout the UK with Alice to these um, pub and club venues with Los Angels and both have been kind of very charming in their own ways. Obviously it's, it's very cool to play the big places that we played. We got to play the O2 just now and um, just in Bir Birmingham we played NEC. What do they call it NEC anymore? Mm. We still call it the NEC. You guys, the old yeah. school, the rock and rollers call it that. But um, yeah, we played that, and and then going from that a week later, coming into town with Los Angeles playing um, sort of a pub. And that's vibe. cool, isn't it? Going back down to like grassroots and. and well, it, it keeps it keeps it's our not heads the egos, small. Is it rock and roll? You shouldn't have the egos. So you that nothing inside. So well, I think you gotta have a little bit of an ego. <laughs> I mean, when your whole life you're told that it, it, it's impossible to do something, if you don't have a little bit of an ego and a little yeah. bit of confidence, it's always it's always finding that line between confidence and arrogance that's important mm. to toe. Because uh, confidence, I think people admire. I think people are inspired by it. Arrogance, people just get turned off by it. And um, I've always tried to balance that line because I am confident in what I do as a performer, as a songwriter, as a guitar player. Um, but every once in a while, yeah, you dip your toe into arrogance and you get bit by it. <laughs> so after this tour with Los Angeles, what's the next plan for you then? Um, the we will wrap up the Los Angeles tour at the end of this month. I'll have, I think, maybe three or four days off and then fly to Florida and go back with Alice Cooper and we'll play all throughout November with Alice Cooper and then he has dates lined up already in 2020, Australia, New Zealand. So, I mean, I always say that Alice Cooper is a huge inspiration, not just for the music that he's made and him as a performer on stage. It's, it's his work ethic and what he does as far as all the different types of careers. So he's very inspirational for me. When you started out in the music industry yeah. years ago, it's all changed now with Pretty all much. the like, downloading music and, and, and stuff. What would you say was the biggest uh, difference then for you personally, like getting the music across? Well, music is now 
not considered so much art as it's considered promo. And before it was considered an art form where you make money off that art form. Now your music is considered more of a promotional thing to, to have so that you can get out on the road and then hopefully scratch out a living doing that. And that's what I think it's hard for a lot of newer bands, you know, finding different ways to, to make income and money. But it's always been a financial crisis as a musician. You know, people always want to say that rock and roll is dead and rock and roll is, it's, it, it, it's, it's, you can't make any money. But you know what? I work for a guy uh, named Alice Cooper that, that year after year continues to make money. Luckily, he's from the old school. He has a, quite a legacy. But I see newer bands doing it as well. It's called touring. And that's one thing that hasn't changed since the beginning of my musical journey up until now. It's putting your head down and doing the work. Learning your instrument, learning how to perform. I just think nowadays it's more important to be able to promote. It's all instant now, isn't it? Straight, go it straight away. You've got to have that music straight away. And it's all yeah, yeah, people, it, it seems as though people don't want what's really good they want what's next and that's maybe perhaps the the, the biggest thing that i try to um, steer away from because i always want what's good and if it takes a, some time to make something good or if you have something good you sort of milk it out i have a solo album that i put out in um, 2018 and i've been able to sort of keep on releasing singles from it. I put, I set, a, I set a goal to put out each song as a music video and release it timely. So I'm still putting out those singles from that record because I really believe in the record and anybody that wants to go and check it out can find me on YouTube, can find me on Spotify. But I only released it single by single digitally. For the, old, for the old schoolers that want to buy the album and buy the CD, I have that available. They can get all 10 tracks at the same time. But I'm still releasing songs singularly on the internet. Busy cat. Try to. <laughs> Try to. You gotta, I mean, you got to stay busy if you want to make... Uh, I mean, all you have to do is listen to the lyrics of uh, ACDC's It's a Long Way to the Top You Want Rock and Roll. It's a blueprint. It's not just... Um, it's just not just a great song, which it is a great song, but those lyrics in that song is basically the blueprint if you want to become a rock and roller. So if, if I can give any advice to the new school rock and rollers, pick yourself up or go on the internet and type in ACDC, it's a long way if you want to rock and roll, because that song will tell you the way it is. Maybe not the way you want it to be, but the way it is. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you very much for having me. We hope to see you again soon. Good. And, and a brilliant show again tonight. A fantastic. Well, Best of luck with the rest of the tour. Well, when I said it on stage, I meant it. Thanks for coming out to see some live music because people have a choice. They can literally stay home and watch every movie ever made, any movie ever made. They can order any type of food, have somebody, you know, deliver it to them in a half an hour. They can. I'll sit on the couch. They don't even have to have a record collection anymore because you just go into your computer and you can listen to any song that was ever recorded. So the fact that people even leave the house in this day and age to experience live music is um, a tribute to them, and that's why it allows us to continue to do what we do for a living. So thank you. Yeah, Keep on supporting live music. Yeah, right. Thank you from Rock Media UK. Thank you very much. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah.